What's up everyone, Johnny from Jettle here, and today I'm gonna to be breaking down a Band 6 thesis statement for the Crucible based on the 2023 HSE Common Module essay question. So let's take a look at the 2023 essay question. A text can ignite ideas about collective human experiences that enrich our view of the world. So before we get into the band six example here, what we wanna note are the key terms of the question because they're the terms that you need to expand on and actually respond to throughout your essay. Not just in the first sentence, not just in the thesis, in every sentence of your introduction, in every topic sentence. Don't be worried about using the key terms of the question too much. Be worried about not using them enough. So in this case, the key terms of the question are collective human experiences. It's asked specifically about collective, not individual. You can still talk about individual, but you need to emphasize the collective. It then talks about how that's going to enrich, it's gonna change in a positive way, our view of the world. So collective human experience and view of the world, our view of the world, our worldview, our perspective. Notice the way I'm kind of defining it to myself, that will always help you break it down. Our view of the world, our perspective, our understanding of the world, our understanding of culture, society. You can interpret that in many ways. Be flexible, do it in a way that's gonna be convenient to your understanding of the text and all the draft material that you've prepared. Now the word enrich is that third key term. It's not a key key term, but it is an important verb that they've used. They wanna talk about how the ideas can actually enrich. They can have a positive impact on our understanding of the world. It doesn't have to mean that everything about the text is positive, it's not saying that. It means our understanding of the world is enriched. Perhaps it's enriching our point of view with something really dangerous about human nature. It's teaching us about things that we need to be aware of, okay? And that definitely happens in The Crucible. The Crucible is a cautionary tale. It's trying to actually make us more aware of how bad things can get when people become scared and they don't think critically and they allow people to just tell them anything and they'll believe anything because they're worried about being ostracized or they're worried about being judged. When people are under that kind of worldview, that very limited worldview, they actually often give up. They sacrifice their freedom without knowing it. That's the case in The Crucible. With all of that in mind, let's have a look at a Band 6 thesis statement for this question. Hey everyone, it's Johnny from Jettle, and if you want to check out state rank examples, band six analysis, step-by-step -step guides to constructing the perfect essays, craft of writing pieces, whatever it is that you need for your English exams, then go to jettle.com. We've put everything in one place for you so that you don't need to look any further to get everything you need to succeed in your exams. And if you want to submit a draft and get expert marking, or you want to use our marking tools to get specific suggestions on how you can improve your essays, your creative writing pieces, anytime, anywhere, make sure you sign up to Jedi. It's less than $10 per week. So let's have a look at a band six thesis statement. The first sentence of someone's introduction that could potentially get a high band six. Through its visceral depiction of collective hysteria, Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, 1953, seeks to enrich his audience's naive view of the world with the confronting idea that our shared fear of alienation can be exploited as a vehicle for political control. Okay, so that sentence is doing a lot. It does a lot in not that many words. It's a fairly long sentence, but what it's achieving by being that long is it's expanding on all of the key terms of the question. It's leaving no doubt in the marker's mind that you understand the question, you can engage with it, and you understand the core ideas that actually relate to the question. You're not just repeating it. You're not just stating the question again. You're actually saying, here's the core collective human experience, Here's how it enriches the audience's worldview. What you'll see is the key terms are all color coded up. We haven't used synonyms. We've used actual key terms of the question. Always use actual key terms, not synonyms. Why would you use a synonym to try and outsmart the question when you could use the actual word the question was asking about? The only reason you might do it is because you're afraid that if you use the actual word, you'd just be repeating the question which shows that if you were using a synonym, you weren't doing enough anyway. You need to do much more than replace the word. You need to expand on it. You need to add words before and after and provide meaningful ideas about it. So how do we do it here? 
we engage with all three of the key terms. We say the collective experience here. And we say it very generally to begin with. There's many ways you could do this. We say collective hysteria. So what we haven't done is we haven't just said collective human experiences. We've actually said a specific general but broadly applicable human experience that relates to the text. So we've said collective hysteria. The bit in orange represents the expanded part of the key term. All throughout this sentence, anything in orange is something that's expanded on a key term. You can see where we've used view of the world in blue, and you can see we've used enrich here in yellow. Now let's go through the sentence. How do we start it? We start it with a little bit of pizzazz. We start it with something that's a bit different to just saying, in Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, which is perfectly fine by the way, but instead of starting the sentence with in Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, we say through. If you say through, it allows you to kind of add a little bit more about how it's presented the idea. It's through a visceral depiction. Why is it visceral? What does visceral mean? Visceral means you feel it in your body. It's actually going to be quite confronting, right? When you watch a play live and it's a tragedy on stage and you're only meters away from it, you're really gonna feel that. It's gonna have a deep impact in you. So that, that deep impact is what you call visceral. Through its visceral depiction of collective hysteria, so straight away we get into the key term of the question, collective. That's what markers wanna see. Don't have any warm up sentences where you're avoiding the words, where you're regurgitating your memorized thesis statements that don't have these words in there. Forget about that. You can certainly reuse a lot of thesis statements that you prepared as long as you rework them to emphasize and focus on the new key terms of this question, not a draft question that you responded to when you were practicing. So you can use prepared thesis statements as a framework, they still contain a lot of the core ideas you wanna talk about. You can no doubt still incorporate and work those ideas into this sentence, but now we're making these new key terms of the question the focus. Sometimes you only need to make minimal changes to a draft, but at the very least, it will provide a framework for you and it will contain some of the core ideas that you can work into a new sentence, even if the changes are a little bit bigger. So through its visceral depiction of collective hysteria, Arthur Miller's play, The Crucible, 1953, they're the formalities. You should always introduce your text in full. You should provide the full name of the composer the first time that you mention them. And you should have the date of publication, 1953. Seeks to enrich. Of course, I'm going to use the word enrich. Why would I use reveal, expose, when the word in the question was enrich? Use that as much as you can. Enrich his audience's naive view of the world. Notice how we've asked what type. What type of worldview are we dealing with here? Quite a naive one. Why does that make sense? Because at the time, a lot of America wasn't aware of how they were being manipulated by the American government, by McCarthy. So naive is a really good adjective to put before the key term, and that helps you immediately expand. So always ask what type, ask yourself what type in relation to the key term, like what type of collective human experience? What type of worldview? Well, it's a naive view of the world to begin with, and then we're enriched, we become a little bit more enlightened. And then the question is, well, how does it enrich our worldview? These are the things you need to ask yourself to actually expand enough. If you wanna be a band six writer, you need to expand by asking the right questions. How is the audience's understanding of the world enriched? It's enriched with the confronting idea that, notice how we're bringing it in, and we say idea because the question also has idea, otherwise I wouldn't use that, but because the question did say it ignites ideas, I've worked it in. It's with the confronting idea that our shared fear of alienation now here, shared, I have used a synonym for collective, but I've only done that because I already said collective in that same sentence. If I was in the next sentence, I would still use collective and not shared. Always make it obvious how you're using the keywords of the question. It's a shared fear of alienation, and it shows how it can be exploited, how it can be taken advantage of as a vehicle for political control. So notice that we've provided a really specific insight as to what we learn, what do we take away from understanding the play, The Crucible. By examining the ideas of collective hysteria, the audience is gonna walk away with a clearer understanding of how our fear of being alienated can actually be exploited. We can be taken advantage of and we can lose our freedom because people are trying to get political control. They're trying to exercise control over us. So that's the key insight that we've actually articulated here. So all of the orange parts here are the expansions. They're all of your insights. They're the new parts that you've added. Whereas 
the other parts, the green, yellow, and blue here, they represent our direct connections to the question. They show the marker that you are engaging with the actual key terms of the question. And then the orange parts are how you get that band six sophistication by not just repeating the question, by actually providing meaningful ideas with specificity, with a little bit of flair, with a little bit of pizzazz, as I said at the start. They're the kinds of things, but anyone can do it. You just need to think, how can I break these terms down? What questions should I ask myself? What type? What type of view of the world? A naive one. It enriches our worldview. How? How does it enrich our worldview? One answer to that question that you ask yourself will enable you to provide a meaningful idea. What is that meaningful idea? How are you going to answer that question? By using all the material you've prepared, by using your understanding of the text. All the bits in orange here are the gaps that you fill with the most relevant ideas and points that you already wanted to make. That's the art of it. You can probably reuse a lot of what you've prepared, a lot of your core argument from your drafts, but you just need to work it in along with the new key terms of the question. The new key terms are your focus, so you'll have to re-emphasize and restructure, but you can probably use the bulk of what you intended to use for that sentence anyway. So that's a band six thesis statement. If you want more help with it, go to jettle.com. We've got lots of examples for different parts of your essay, lots of band six analysis that you can use. And also if you want expert marking and feedback on your essays, check out Jedi. We've got AI based feedback and real life expert feedback from our team. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like the video. That would be doing me a huge favor. And of course, I'll see you in the next one.